low. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the Dr. Ben update. Um, yeah, oh boy, yeah. All right, uh, this came in to me from uh, a family member. And uh, let's see, it's about a person called uh, Sir Richard Dearlove who used to work for, I think, MI6? Yep, MI6. Sorry, I got my computer over here with, uh, with the thing on it. Um, and so this is the spy agency, one of the two spy agencies uh, in the UK. And, um, yeah, he was ahead for a while, which is great. Uh, so he's somebody who's good at uh, conspiracies, unraveling them, secrecy, spies, stuff like that. Fine. Okay, and so, yeah, right, and had a good career, retired, great, yeah, so why are we talking about him? Because, yeah, he's gone and, uh, you know, spouted off to the Daily Mail, among others, uh, that uh, he knows the secret origin of coronavirus, and it is most likely, he's convinced, that it's a, uh, a deliberate release of an engineered virus, yeah, all of which is, I think we've shown the evidence before on here, all of which is super dumb. So uh, the, um, it's based on a, um, uh, a statement, I'm not even sure it's a paper, from uh, a Norwegian virologist and a, uh, a British uh, virologist, neither of which is a coronavirus scientist. And so <laughs> that's, usually, that's usually the common unifying thread. When somebody says something particularly dumb, it is not coming from inside the coronavirus community. It's usually not even coming from inside the working virologist community. It's usually coming from somebody who knows something about something else, uh, thinking that they're also uh, going to wade right in and, yeah, be an expert. And, you know, good luck. That's, that's how you learn things. But um, don't go, yeah, uh, don't go spouting off everything you think. <laughs> It's not productive. There we go. So part of their line of reasoning is that coronavirus is definitely engineered because it has this thing called a polybasic cleavage site, uh, which is RR, uh, no, RRAR, yes, in uh, SARS coronavirus 2, which is in the same place as there is usually a polybasic cleavage site in most coronaviruses. Like in the mouse hepatitis virus, it is R-A-H-R. And if you know your amino acids, uh, even if you don't, yeah, it's got R's at the end. Those are the basic ones. And so, and H is sometimes basic. And so you got three out of four that are basic. And with the other one, R-R-A-R, you've got also three out of four, the three R's that are basic. And so both of those are a polybasic cleavage site. Amazing, yeah. This is something that pops up in a lot of different viruses. Pops up in flu viruses. And, all right, two lines of reasoning why this is dumb. One, all right, if you walked into this knowing nothing about coronaviruses and just looked at this virus and just compared it to the other SARS virus, the other SARS virus is one of the weirdos. It's missing the polybasic cleavage site, or it's, it has fewer basic sites there, and it doesn't seem to be uh, particularly used. So if you're only comparing new SARS to old SARS, you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's a conspiracy. But if you take it in the context of every other coronavirus that we know, you say, oh, that's a really common thing. I don't, I, why are we, why are we talking about this? Did somebody engineer the mouse coronavirus 50 years ago? Yeah, no. <laughs> Release it from a secret lab in, I don't know, London or something? But probably not is the answer. <laughs> Um, the other thing is that this cleavage site is not particularly important. Um, people have knocked out this cleavage site, and the virus does fine. Yeah, <laughs> so this is something that maybe gives it a little boost. This might be like a 10% uh, tweak that makes it go a little bit faster. The main important cleavage site is the one where the enzyme called Tempress 2 cleaves. And that's further down, um, I don't know, like 100, 100, 150 amino acids downstream of where this uh, polybasic uh, yeah, engineered cleavage site is. So one, it's not important. Two, it's there in most coronaviruses. Three, if you knew anything about coronaviruses, none of these other two things would be a factor, is what I would say to this, um, yeah, distinguished, knighted goofball. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I don't know. I don't want to be the guy that says stay in your lane all the time. But there are times in which you can tell when somebody's out of their lane. They're just weaving all over the place and they have no idea where they're going. So, all right. Yeah. You know, there are times when thinking like this does save lives. I'm being super suspicious about things and questioning and being like, can we be sure about that? And validating the facts this is a guy who is retired. He's not particularly connected with any of this anymore. And he's probably remembering, yeah, it's like, I'm good at this stuff. Yeah, I used to do this at a high level. And oh, because of his former position, people are going to listen. And they probably shouldn't. That's the real real downside here. On the one hand, say whatever you like. Uh, yeah, that's part of free discourse. On the other hand, don't say stupid stuff that people are going to take the wrong way and it's going to start, I don't know, what are you hoping to start a war or something like that over a thing that didn't happen? That's just, ugh, ah, people. <laughs> people. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. Uh, rant over. Um, we'll, we'll go back to uh, science. We do have those vaccine papers to cover.